Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 14th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to talk about glacial melt, in particular Greenland glacial melt. But what, I'm, what I want to do is just say that, that the reason why I'm talking about Greenland glacial melt is because a, a recent study that, that I spoke about last week talking about mass loss in East Antarctica has set the stage for increased concerns about glacial melt and sea level rise. And what I want to do is just show that we're not just seeing melt in West Antarctica, we're not just seeing an increased risk of glacial destabilization in East Antarctica, but we're also seeing increased melt in Greenland. And so all of the major ice sheets of the world right now are, are showing increased melt rates, increased glacial destabilization rates, and, and this has a, a cumulative effect on global sea level rise. Now I'm going to focus in on some recent science as it relates to the Greenland ice sheet just to provide a little bit more context. So recent studies have found that the edge zone of Greenland, the coastal glaciers and ice caps of Greenland are losing mass and that they have reached a tipping point where they lose mass year after year under presently elevated global temperatures. The interior Greenland ice sheet, however, remains stable for now. This is concerning for a number of reasons, and I'm just going to talk about them with you. And, and just to note that the recent study, science that I'm talking about is from last year, from 2017, and that in general, scientists tend to think that that Greenland ice sheet central ice stabilization comes under threat as we approach the two degrees Celsius warming level above 1850 to 1900s averages. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull a quote from this article that was written in the Huffington Post from one of the Greenland researchers, Ian Hoart at Ohio State University who notes that these peripheral glaciers and ice caps can be thought of as colonies of ice that are in rapid decline, many of which will likely disappear in the near future. So the edge zone of Greenland is already reaching a tipping point, and, the, and this is accelerating the ice mass loss in Greenland. And, and this occurs for, for a number of reasons. First, is due to the fact that a, a section of ice called the fern, which is, it's, it's not solid ice yet, but it's, it's not loosely packed snow. It's, it's more compact snow that is in the process of, of becoming solid ice. And this fern contains gaps between ice crystals that can trap water. And in a stable ice sheet, the, these gaps do not become completely saturated with water. They, they, they kind of fill up with some water. This water filters down below and then refreezes in winter. And, and in this way, the fern helps to keep the ice sheets stable. But what has been found in the edge zone ice sheets is that the fern is, fern is completely saturated with water and that refreeze does not occur to the level that it would typically occur on a stable ice sheet, and so that water itself, non-frozen water, tends to accumulate in the ice sheet, which tips the balance toward, toward melt. And what we have seen is that since 1997, the edge zone Greenland ice has seen mass loss consistently, year after year, on into the present day. Even as the central Greenland ice sheet has tended to gain a bit of mass due to increased levels of precipitation. 
Now, there are a number of reasons why loss of edge zone ice are a concern. And I would like to just, as a backdrop, look at the topography of Greenland and talk about ice mass size. So these edge zone ice Ice, ice, um, ice caps and uh, ice sheets that are melting, and many of them are in regions where the ocean is, is confronting the glacier and in a below sea level trough. And in the, in the case of Jacob Chauvin, this trough goes deep into the Greenland ice sheet. And this is in some ways true with the Zachariah Glacier and the Peterman Glacier as well. And so, so what can happen is that as these edge zones melt, you get increased movement of these glaciers that can then telegraph further into the central ice sheet. Now, Greenland is not quite as vulnerable as sections of Antarctica to this kind of melt process. But the low, low level elevation of the land topography beneath the ice sheet does generate a degree of vulnerability as we can see in these topographic maps. In addition, the taller ice sheet in the central region of Greenland is surrounded on all sides by a lower level, lower elevation edge ice zone. And if this taller ice sheet it ends up encountering a decreasing height at the edge zone, this can tend to also accelerate movement toward the edge zone and result in a de destabilization of the central ice sheet. It, it's worth noting that Greenland itself is isolated, more isolated than Antarctica. It is at a lower latitude than Antarctica. And so in some ways, it's, it's a little bit more vulnerable to surface temperature changes and to changes in its periphery, such as loss of sea ice and warming bottom waters as a whole. In total, Greenland represents about 20 feet of sea level rise. Now, these new studies from last year noted that Greenland could lose as much as 30% of its edge zone ice by 2100. And I'd just like to reiterate that scientists in general are, are quite concerned about Greenland in the two degrees Celsius warming range. My personal opinion, and this is an opinion, just I'm just gonna state that, but looking back at, at paleoclimate, for ice sheets in general, vulnerable ice sheets in general, it appears that the 1.5 to 2.5 degrees Celsius warming range is, is, is a range of concern. So I, I'm just saying that as an opinion. Generally, scientists identify the two degrees Celsius temperature range. Um, just going to add as a caveat the 1.5 to 2.5 degrees Celsius range. So just to give you guys an idea of what's going on in the north, as a lot of folk science focuses on Antarctica and, and what's going on with Antarctic Arctic melt, which is also concerning. And just to note that the edge zone ice apparently for Greenland has reached a tipping point, which can have longer term impacts on the st stability uh, of the entire Greenland ice sheet as well. So thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting with you soon.